do ba do 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 sharky breath. He plays video games. Hello, and welcome back to Disco Elysium. I have thought a lot about what to do from this point forward. By the way, I've been playing this game ostensibly. I should stick with the outcome I got and see where it takes me. But I've been struggling with the events at the end of the last episode. Like, on the one hand, it absolutely makes sense. Harry... Harry is who he is, even if he's had this life-changing event where he lost his entire self and has been rebuilding himself. And even if I am trying to influence him in a positive way, there are certain things that are part of him that are going to manifest until he deals with them. And you can't just change your entire self in a week, no matter how flexible your mind is. So the fact that that came out of his mouth in the middle of that particular set of events is not unrealistic at all. The thing about it is... I'm having difficulty reconciling... How do I put this? I'm glad that I've had several days to think about this before I started recording again, because in the instant that it happened, when not only did Harry say the thing that he said to Kim, but he was forced to say it with no other option. And in the conversation thereafter, he was so sullen and repentant and didn't even want to apologize until I twisted his dang arm. Like, at the time, I felt entirely cut off from my ability to sympathize with Harry. If he was that disinterested and even... even trying to get along with his ostensible partner of the week, <laughs> admittedly. They've only known each other a little while. What's that? Has it slipped the concrete here? A sewer? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. In any case... I decided to do a little asking around with people who know this game. And just ask for a little bit of information. Nothing particularly significant, but basically the way I saw it was this. There were really two ways that the scene at the end of the last episode can be handled within the context of this game. Number one, it can just be another one of those things where Harry frequently has conversation options that make him seem like a horrible person. And you're, you're entirely... You are allowed to pick those at any time. If you want Harry to be just kind of an unrepentant asshole, then by all means take these options. And there'll have, uh, you know, there'll be repercussions in terms of how you interact with other NPCs, but that is a choice you can make. And in this case... Well, it was a red check. It was a failure of a red check. And historically in this game, when you fail a red check, you're kind of at the game's mercy. Sometimes it gives you, you know, some backpedally options to try and get out of, you know, what you've just gotten yourself into. What's this? The light vanishes inside the concrete slit. The structure goes deep under the earth. Huh. Apparently I've noticed something. But here's the thing. We're not going to deal with this right now. I do want to figure that out later. I'm going to try and rediscover it in a minute, but we're not going to deal with it right now. I only have one thing I'm going to be doing right now, and I'll explain why in just a minute here. So yes, possibility number one. It's just Harry being terrible. Normally, it's a choice you make to do that sort of thing, but in this case, since it's a failed red check, they can just kind of do that to you. 
Possibility number two, what I was personally hoping for and what I wanted to get some hint of as to whether it was waiting or not, is that Harry could use this opportunity to, well, you know, pay some attention to the fact that he's apparently internalized a certain amount of racism that could probably stand some attention. And given that his mind is particularly flexible, maybe something could come of that. Some sort of positive outcome could come from this awful... <laughs> This awful interaction. After all this build-up, all this anticipation of something big coming over the last few episodes, you know, clearly was building towards something. And I understand, given that it was a red check, if there was going to be a particularly positive result from the red check, then they wanted a accordingly negative failure condition to the red check I guess that's probably where they were going with all that because as far as I can as I understand there is no possibility to have Harry think any harder about this supposedly there is a there is an, a further interaction down the line on this matter and then it is kind of dismissed which is fair I understand and I want to see the follow up to this that particular I want to see the next meeting of Harry and Kim at this point, which is why we're still in this save pile. Because yes, as you may have guessed at this point, I am in fact intending to reload, redo the dance scene, and get the red check succeed at it. Because on the one hand, yes, that is saves coming, and I try, am trying not to do that in this particular run through. But on the other hand, it. It killed my motivation entirely. And I know that's just a personal issue, and... Maybe I should just soldier through it and deal with the consequences, but... I was really deeply disappointed and almost felt betrayed. Because... I did not see anything like that coming. I didn't even consider that being a faint possibility. And I, I recognize it's actually not out of nowhere. Harry has had conversation options, particularly with Kim, that make reference to racial stuff. I've even selected one of them here and there when I didn't actually realize what I was doing or when I thought it was just going to be fairly innocent. Like in the first couple of conversations with him. It's not out of nowhere. But it just sort of twists in my gut and doesn't... Anyway. This is the conclusion I came up with, and I hope that's acceptable to everybody. For right now, though, we're going to go see... First off, if I can check on Kim in his room. If that's, in fact, where he's gone. I'm guessing that he's not going to want to talk to me right now, and that is fair. And failing that, I'm just going to sit on a bench until it's tomorrow. And then we're going to talk to Kim, and we're going to see what comes of it, if anything. And then, well, then I guess I'll get saves coming. <laughs> no response, no nothing, no point of interaction. Kim has locked his door and is, I can't even knock. Okay, okay, all right, got it. Well then, I guess I gotta find myself a bench. I wonder if I can borrow the other half of Gaston's. Ah, can I use this one? No? I can borrow Gaston's bench, maybe. Maybe? No? Is that a no? <laughs> I can't use this bench! Okay, hang on, I need to find a way to kill time. Bear with me. There is another bench. Hopefully I can use it to spend time the same way. You sit on the wind-worn wooden planks of the bench. Your feet ache. Yeah, I'd imagine they do. Okay. All right. Well, killing some time. Here we go. Time passes. You ponder upon an endless winter that covers everything in ice and snow. What a struggle it would be. Presumably, yes. 
Presumably, yes, but that's not happening. Things should be getting better, I hope. Time passes. You ponder upon an endless winter that comes. This case is unsolvable. You should just give up right now and apologize to the whole town. Says the bench. Interesting. Huh. Oops, I didn't mean to get up. You sit on the wind. Grains of sand remind you of downtrodden people. Multitudes suffering under the harsh and unforgivable heel of capital. Hmm. Well, at least I had a couple of different thoughts in the middle of sitting here for six... Six hours? <laughs> Gotta wait till after nine o'clock or I can't go to bed. The twiddling barely keeps your hands warm against the frigid wind blowing from the coast. After a while, you've had enough. And here we are. Wait. Math. Yes, nine o'clock. Good. Get up. I don't think I'm gonna... Yeah, I'm gonna have to look at the thought for Cole de Mama Dakwa as well. I'll have a look at it right now. Cole de Mama Dakwa. It's not only your eardrums that register sound anymore. Your very skin has become an organ of hearing. Looking for a whisper, light and low. A god who's very, very silent. Nothing escapes you. A cockroach in the other room. A candy wrapper falling on dry grass. A drunk falling from a chair in a bar 20 meters away. In fact, you haven't heard the call du mama dakwa, but you have discovered that you have amazing hearing. It must be the only part of you the alcohol hasn't drowned out. Keep listening. I'm guessing this is going to be a bonus to perception. Plus three perception, golden ear, minus one encyclopedia, no room for anything else. So your perception is just entirely off the chain with this thing in your head, huh? But less experience overall because no encyclopedia, or less encyclopedia anyway. Huh. Huh. That put your perception at what now? Ten! That's fairly ridiculous. Fairly ridiculous indeed. Okay, alright. Well, but as I said, the only thing we're doing today is sleeping and seeing... It's getting cold this late in the night. Time to call it a day. Seeing what Kim has to say tomorrow. Or more, more specifically, what Harry has to say to Kim tomorrow. The bed is comforting, if a bit run down. Still, you've earned a rest. Have you now? You may have noticed I'm referring to him as Harry now. Like, that was an almost immediate effect of the scene at the end of the last episode. And I don't know if it's necessarily appropriate that my brain has reacted this way. But I always referred to, you know, the protagonist as me. But there's this distance now. And I'm, I'm hoping... I'm hoping that reloading and doing the other outcome is going to help with that. Or maybe I just need to be more flexible in my way of thinking. I don't know. But either way, go to sleep. The place feels almost like home now. Quiet and dignified around you. A new life by the seaside. This is the same You're scene, incredibly right? tired. The darkness and warmth come fast. You're falling asleep. Hmm. It's easier this time. Drifting off, your head has found a comfortable indent in the pillow. Your legs and your torso feel like lead weights sinking to the bottom of the sea. Until they're suddenly light. Interestingly, that is the same thing you said last time, but my responses are different. I've heard this song before. Sing along in silent communion. How many days have I been in Martinez already? Martinez? Nays? Martinez? There are no days here. There are no weeks. Just black tape spinning on repeat until the end. Right, continue. For now, a little while, you can sleep without words or images. When the pictograms and the hieroglyphs of the world return, they seem silent somehow. 
The alarm rings quietly too. You're ready. Hope so. Open your eyes. Is he even going to be outside, or do I have to go get him at the whirling? Probably he'll be outside. I'm guessing he wakes up sooner than I do. Just from what I know about Kim, you know. There he is. There's nothing? Yes. Really? There's nothing. We're just going to act like it never happened. What about me? Good. Let's change the subject. That's it. There's nothing. There's there's absolutely nothing. There's no further follow-up or any anything. Oh, man. Okay. Okay, then yes, I'm going to reload. I'll uh, catch up with you when I'm back to the point, the critical point, and hopefully this time we won't say anything too awful. Again, sorry if you're disappointed by this, but I think I have to in order to keep myself in this game. Okay. So, Savoir Fair. But also authority, huh? Okay. There. Now it'll be extremely dangerous when dancing. Should be a great time. All right. In the interest of not. In, in the interest of being prepared for this. There. Oh, hey, man. It's good to see you. All right. Here we go. You close your nice. eyes. Total darkness. Here it will begin. So what was that about unformed skulls? Psst. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Every vertebrate in your spine is an unformed skull. Ready it's the same thing. Pop up okay, continue. To rule the world. Who are you? I am the spinal cord. What is happening? From what I can see, it's about to bust a move. Since I'm already saves coming, just out of curiosity, what happens if I try to stop? No one cares. <laughs> the move will bust itself. Resistance only makes the move more futuristic. That is what I thought. Continue. With your eyes still closed, the first thing you feel, yep, yep, this is the same. Or, as you open your eyes, you should scream, hyper, hyper. And so I shall. You have become a flawless interlocking mechanism, yep. free from self-awareness, no deliberation, only. Oh my God! No way! All right, well, how about yes way? With his real-to-real -real mixer blasting the anthem. Ah! Throws a screwdriver and a bunch of drill chucks into the corner, and it... the young woman lifts. Asil, aren't you going to dance? No. The lead programmer throws the other young woman a knowing glance. She's still at her mainframe. The young man, the authority of the law, is clearly a question. Ah, that wasn't here before because my authority was too low. The authority of the law is clearly unquestionable. I guess we'll see if that's true, authority. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do, is there anything more I can do? I want to break the limit before I talk to Kim, just in case this goes poorly again. The dynamic motion of your flailing body is bordering on the extreme. You're going off the charts. Plus, I'm armed in both hands. Continue. You feel as if turning on the hyperdrive would be a point of no return. Feels almost mental. Are you sure you have the entire possibility? I do not. Okay, no wait. Time to wait. I'm waiting. Shivers challenging. Okay, okay, okay. 
It's a shivers check, but I gotta get Kim on this. This is very, very important. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this in the first place. All right, Kim, get in here. What's going on here? The delinquents. Continue. This is clearly a Code 31 emergency. Yes, it is. The lieutenant squid is obviously having... A Code 31 emergency? Really? On the... That's it, it's on the dance floor. The lieutenant Chris... What's happening? Um... I'm undercover? <laughs> Good for you. Rock on, then. All right, it's the same response no matter what. We ain't going anywhere before we tear shit up. What? I did say there was an emergency on the dance floor. Oh, come on, Harry. Yes, come on, Harry. 92%. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, 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 okay. Come on. What's hard to Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Critical failure. Listen, I'm not going through this again. Hang on. I'll see you back here in a second. You know what? On the plus side, on the plus side, that didn't happen the first time. I didn't go into it with a 92% chance of success and have a critical failure and then have to go through that scene. I would just have been more angry. Anyway, see you back in there and back at the end of it in a little bit. You close your toad to rule the world. Is that true? Yes, it's all true in the spinal cord. I am ready. Good. Busted. Full hearty. With your eyes still as you open your eyes, you have become floor free from self aware. Oh my god! Our cup. With his real. Ah! He throws a screwdriver and a bunch of drill chucks into the corner. So? The young woman. A seal? Aren't you going to dance? No. The lead programmer throws the She does in fact start nodding her head. The animation changes. Continue. She's still at her main Dance Andre. The authority of the law. Alright, Kim. Third time had friggin' better be the charm. Get in here. This is the lieutenant. He's obvious. The lieutenant. What's happening? Here we come dance the story of Uh-huh. Rock on then. What? come on, Harry. And here we go. Who's the Thank you? I rolled a four even. I'm just not cut out for this authority business. <laughs> I That was an exact success. Any lower and it was a failure. Lieutenant, I am only going to pull rank on you one time and that time is now. Are you kidding me? I assure you I am not. Now get your groove on, Lieutenant. It's all a joke to you, isn't it? Chain of command, joke. Future of dance, joke. Well, no more. Cut a rug, Lieutenant. <laughs> I'm just going with the top one. Get my what on? The lieutenant leans closer, unable to make out your words over the pumping beats, but I'm pretty sure he could guess what I'm saying. I said, get your goddamn groove on! Boogie woogie! Sheesh, okay. He backs up with his hands raised in the air, observing the crisscross of your feet. Okay, you psychopath. I see what you're doing there. It's jacked up footwork, plus um, Is that Ubi for dancing? Is it? <laughs> he adjusts his spectacles, then pops his collar as high as it will go, which he seemed to have already done in his picture, but that's fine. Continue. Nah, it's not Ubi folk. It's hardcore. I mean, it might be Ubi folk also. I'm not sure. Continue. Yeah. Whatever. The lieutenant snorts. You talk a big talk, lieutenant. Let's see some moves. Hardcore will never d never die, but you will. Say nothing, but push the footwork extra hard. Now, nah, just let's see some moves here, Kim. Oh yeah. I did 15 years in the juvenile crime unit. I can do it inappropriate. I believe it. Let's see it then. Now, check this shit out. I would love to. The lieutenant begins to heel kick the church floor with such intensity. It's reasonable to fear. He'll kick a hole right through it, causing the floor to crack and the pillars to collapse, bringing the church roof down on all of you. <laughs> on the one hand, what he's doing there is quite impressive. It, it also makes him, it looks as though someone has seized him by his coat and he's just like dangling in the middle of the air trying to f find purchase with his feet but like in stop motion or as if it was buffering which is really hard to do I have to imagine so good on him, continue it doesn't look like he can shit either I suspect you're right uh, anyway, is there anything more I can do? let's break the limit the dynamic motion of your flailing body is bordering on the extreme you'll go Exactly where I want it. You feel as if turning on the hyperdrive will be a point of no return. 
feels almost melancholy. Are you sure you have the entire posse along for this? As far as I can tell, then yes, I do. Together, where are you? Here we go again. Hardcore fills the air. The sound above my head. What now? The sound above your what? <laughs> the lieutenant suddenly stops. I was gonna ask too, Kim. Um, your sound above your hair. Above my hair, man. Continue. Okay, this is too invasive. Excuse me. Oh come on! Oh come on, Kim. I got a plus two for him dancing. Turn on the hyperdrive. Hopefully, it'll get him back in here. On the coast of the Martinez Inlet, in a small weather-beaten slave church built 380 years ago by settlers from the Occident, most likely to guard against an anomaly at its center. An officer of the RCM is contorting his body into idiotically rigid shapes as he invents the future of dance music. It's the hardest anyone has ever danced. And Shivers would know, what is this strange feeling I keep having, this cold, even now? I am La Revachelière. I'm sure you are, continue. I am the city. Whenever this voice speaks, it's the city? What do you mean you are the city? How are you talking to me? I want to know everything. How are you talking to me? The modulations of my voice are noted down with thermometers and barometers. You feel me in your nostrils, on the little hairs on the back of your neck. Continue. I also reside in your lungs and vestigial organs. Everywhere, there is space. When what do you mean, you are the city? I am a fragment of the world spirit, the genius Loki of Rivachol. The genius Loki of Rivachol. My heart is the wind corridor. The bottom of my air is red. I have a hundred thousand luminous arms. The bottom of your air is red? <sighs> Continue. Come morning, I carry industrial dust and let it settle on tree leaves. I shake the dust from those leaves and onto your coat. I've seen you. I've seen you. I've seen you with her. And I've seen you without her. I've seen you on the crescent of the hill. Who's her in this case? Is it who I think it might be? But who am I? Why are you talking to me? You are an officer of the citizens' militia, Jean de Nerebu. When you wear your coat, you wear my soul. And currently I'm not wearing my coat. Continue. You move through my streets freely, in motor carriages and on foot. You have access to the hidden places. You also circulate among those who are hidden. I suppose I do. Continue. I need you. You can keep me on this earth. Be vigilant. I love you. Continue. An officer of the RCM is lying on the floor of a small church with his eyes rolled back and his tongue lolling out. Several others are standing around him. He slowly comes to. I was so deep into it that I just passed the heck out. <laughs> oh no. Continue. Had a good rest there? I spoke to the city of Revachel. I don't know about good. Say nothing. I, um, I don't think I could probably keep it from coming out. Fuck yeah! Yeah! I bet you did. Those were some advanced moves, man. And then I fell down. That's all great, but we should really get going. We spent enough time doing aerobic exercise for today. I mean, we're going to be running constantly no matter where we go, so, you know, get used to it. Get up. Hey, at least I didn't... Hit anyone with my tools on the way down. You might be imagining it, but it feels like Egghead turned the volume <laughs> down. Such is his respect. Yeah, continue. Man! Now! Now, man! Now! The would-be leader stutters with excitement. Let's see, this is the other... This is... Okay. 
this is the back half of why I wanted to reload this. But first off, that scene is optional, and if you fail, you get the thing I got at the end of last episode? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That was... You would just not see that. If I decided to just keep playing, that would have not happened. I would never have known who that voice was, probably. After that, having that sort of an experience, I feel like... Like, compared to this, what happened last time, how would Harry even keep going? He didn't even take volition damage from that encounter at the end of last episode. Anyway, continue. The uh, right, right, right. The, the back half of the back half of why I wanted to reload and and do this is because when I got to this part, this interaction with Andre and beyond, I I didn't I couldn't I couldn't deal with it. I couldn't didn't care about it. I had to figure out what was going on with Kim. Nothing else was important at the time, and now I can actually have a look at it. So. There's that. Continue. Now imagine if we could do that, right? But with like a thousand people. Yeah, continue. End of human development. Mission complete. Right ecstatic. I think I'm making up, not, not slang necessarily, but like grammatical form, whatever. All right. That one, continue. You're absolutely beat. Muscles relaxed and feet like noodles underneath. Right. Okay, cool. Well, that's it for now. Goodbye, officer. Ah, <sighs> and then, then we have this thought, yes. Then we have the thought, the one that I'm probably going to get rid of. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so yeah, yeah, Egghead yeah. is clearly not Van Eyck in gig disguise. Posters. Accept. I accept. I am curious about the gig posters. If I can find them, I'll have a look at them. But I'm guessing it's just kind of like a background flavor thing, which is maybe I will keep Arno Van Eyck around for a little bit. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Okay, let's have a look at these new tasks I've got unlocked, because now I care about things again. Ask of Rod about... I always called her, called her a cell, but Sona pronounced it a seal? I'm not sure which it is. And the drug lab. This is a waste of time, but we're probably going to do it anyway. A cell said of Rod is connected to the drug operation in the church. Maybe you can use this to manipulate him. No, I can't. Inform him plays on us about the source of doom. Sona's research has led you to discover a 2mm origin point of Pale in the DeLorean Church of Humanity down the coast. This might be negatively affecting the entire neighborhood, including the doomed commercial area where Plaisance works. Tell her about it. And then the Dice Maker? Same wording, but swap in Dice Maker. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Great. Do I have to have any more conversations with anybody else in here after the events that just happened? Egghead is not at his table anymore, but he's still interacting as if he was. Are you good, man? Can I even talk to him? Is he bugged out? I seem to not be able to talk to him. Okay. Well, let's let's talk to you then. Hello. Oh, the god of dance is back. I'm dancing with the god of dance. He dances over to you, moving in a slightly less lame manner. <laughs> Goodbye, officer. He's trying so hard. Good on him. Noid. Noid. Yo, man. What's on your mind? He drops a bolt into his toolbox. I got nothing else to say, I guess. I guess nothing else to say. Marcel? Everything good? <laughs> I just chose that because that was the last option I hadn't I hadn't tried since I had to reload this twice, but it has become a canon thing now. Hard cup. She nods to you with her respect and turns off her recording device. Nah, I got nothing. <laughs> uh, hi Sona. Yes, what is it? I don't need anything. Alright, cool, great, wonderful. Uh, I'm going to leave and come back in just in case there is more dialogue with Egghead. I'm guessing there will not be, but I need him to be back at his table or I cannot talk to him. Okay. Okay. Yep, he's back. Good. Good. Hello, Egg. Hello, Egg. Good morning! Yeah! Hard I've thought about and the dis I've, I've thought about the discarded melody and came to the conclusion that Van Eyck has lived around here. I guess that is what I came up with, isn't it? J'adore! God is close by, but maybe he doesn't have good enough ears. Let me turn it up so we can lure him here. He turns a knob on his mixer. Okay, you do that, Egghead. Sounds good. Great, great, wonderful. This is going to bring Revish all together. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, 
Okay. Let me fix my outfit real quick, and then we'll get back to work, okay? Cool. I think I'm gonna keep the empathy code on. Despite the fact that the city just spoke to me and told me that wearing my coat was important in some fashion. <laughs> All right. It occurs to me, due to my one little save scumming incident here, I technically have seen the outcome of Cold Mama Dakwa. It's a boost, boost to perception, which is not a bad thing, per se. Minus two encyclopedia. It's just a question of if that's worth it at the moment. I could technically work on something else now that I know the outcome, which kind of goes against the way I play this game. Oh, hey, I've also got a bonus skill point. Come to think on it, because I didn't have to retry the dance check. Huh. Huh. What do I do? Do we do cleaning out the rooms instead? Wait, did I never... Hardcore aesthetic, didn't I... How did that get undone? Did I mess something up? Did I switch something out? I swear I had... Did I never actually follow up on hardcore aesthetic? Maybe I never did. Minus two interfacing. I'm probably going to need that interfacing if I'm going to get that uh, piece of equipment that I need for the... for the uh, taking on the responsibility thing. Alright, alright. I'm going to allow myself to stop Cold Mama Dakwa and put in cleaning out the rooms. It's slightly faster. I don't know what it's going to do. And it doesn't give me a penalty at the moment. I'm all right with it. I'm all right with it. It's fine. Okay. It's unfortunate it worked out that way, and I gave myself a little bit of a spoiler. If I'd been thinking about it, I would have paused Cold Amabadakwa before I sat on a bench for six hours. But I didn't, and that's fine. Now I'm going to find the things I found when I was wandering around town talking through my process here. And we're going to actually do them properly. And then we'll get down to proper business, okay? Got to find that slit first. This building. It was in the side of this building above me. That. Here. That. Yes. Yes. This. The fade remains of a poster with the date 46. A name is faintly legible. Arno Van Eyck. Okay. That's not the... That's not the slit. Where's the... There it is. That's what I need. Go there, please. in the concrete here. A sewer. And if I walk around a little bit, hopefully... Yeah. The light vanishes inside the concrete slit. The structure goes deep under the earth. Okay, so yell ho into the slit. What's in there? Kim, any, Kim, any idea what's down there? Which was not an option because Kim wasn't here because I said awful things. Um, yell ho into the slit. There's no echo and no answer. What's in there? Maybe it's just a storm drain for the sewer. Uh, in that case, why am I having a thought about it? Kim, any idea what's down there? No idea. Could be connected to one of the buildings around here. He takes his glasses off to polish. Uh, think we might find Ruby down there? It seems like a stretch. We might find her down somewhere. There's an old storm drain system beneath Martinez that's mostly collapsed. Revachol's sewage system has been built and rebuilt four or five times now. Mm-hmm. Continue. In conclusion, she could be under any building. He puts his glasses back on. Uh, but not in there? <sighs> I hope not. He looks into the slit and sighs. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. Okay, sounds good. So the reason I hadn't seen that before was because it wasn't possible to have that thought before. Because technically what I'm doing here is wandering around on the coast, which is what I'm supposed to do if I'm trying to find Ruby, right? Maybe not. I was supposed to talk to the residents of the fishing village if I wanted to find Ruby. Wait, I'm at the church? I'm at the church. Okay, all right. In that case, I'm going down to the Fisherman Jacks. There was one more thing that I saw and ignored because I was currently on a mission that could, uh... could have no interruptions. Up here, I think. I had a little... circly observation ball. But I didn't touch it because... Wait, what's this? Oh. 
Jamrock Biker Cop Sunnies. Minus my plus one empathy, minus one logic. Uh, sure. Let's have a look. Where are they? There they are. For taking your Harmel Ryu Supersonic out for a ride on the streets of Jamrock, where your heart is buried. Plus one empathy, feel the streets. Minus one logic, leave the reason behind. I see. Well, more empathy is more good as far as I'm concerned. Not at the moment, necessarily, because I'm not talking to anybody, but that seems like a useful thing to have around. I've got so many sunglasses options, or, you know, various glasses options. Oh, look, there it is. That's the, that's the thing. Okay, what do we got? A faint smell of soldering, melted in... Soldering, melted, melted insulation, nylon and ozone. I wonder why. What's causing that smell? I suppose it's just that I didn't notice it the first time through because my perception wasn't high enough, yeah? That seems likely. On that particular note, I wonder if it's a bad idea to not be doing cold Amadakwa at the moment because more perception means I notice more things and there's value to be had there. Hmm. Well, of course, I do have that extra skill point. I technically could do away with something and uh, get back on researching it, I suppose. Thought cabinet, that is. I, mm, okay, no, I'm I'm going to stand by my informal policy of if I've got three skill points, I can spend them on just eliminating something from my th thought cabinet. I want to try and keep a stockpile of skill points around just in case. What's this? The low rumble of a bass beat. Your heart repeats it. Huh. A bass beat, you say? Where's it coming from? A pawn shop probably has one of those things I'm looking for. What is it, a transceiver I need? Let me see here. Responsibility day. A working transceiver and return to the church. Okay. And the options that I mentioned as being possibilities, there was the pawn shop, there was, I saw one in an office near the harbor. Oh, that one! The one the one for the union workers that you pass through on the way to Everard's office. That's the, that's the one, probably, huh? Okay. And there was another thing mentioned, but I don't remember what it was. Let's at least have a look at what Roy's got and see if he's got something reasonable. Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. I'm looking for a radio transceiver. You got anything? A transceiver, is it? Yeah, we should have something to do the trick. Okay, continue. He produces a machine encased in a blue bake light shell. Its black face covered in an assortment of pearl-topped knobs and dials. Mm-hmm, continue. The lieutenant whistles a long, quivering note. Really? Kim's impressed, huh? Continue. A genuine crystal spark. This is a connoisseur's model. Good for picking up foreign milieus. I... okay. Continue. The Model 9 also comes equipped with a signal purifier to suppress crosstalk. Especially good around here with our funky reception. This is gonna be expensive, isn't it? Continue. In other words, it will put even the lieutenant's beloved Dynawave to shame. Sounds perfect. Sounds a bit like overkill. Sounds expensive. <laughs> I mean, that was my, re my reaction. Let's see how much it is. It sounds perfect. It's about as close to perfection as a transceiver gets. And we're only asking 120 real for it. Holy man. It's actually too expensive for me to buy. Wow. Highly expensive transceiver. 120 real. Okay, real. Right. Cool. So I'm going to have to sell a... I'm going to shop around a bit. I might be back later. You'll be back again. I've got a feeling. Suit yourself. Can't promise this beauty will be here when you come back, though. He gently returns the transceiver to his shelf behind the counter. Okay. So I'm going to have to sell some stuff if I want to be able to afford that. Either that or I need to find a way to just get um, Lumpty Dumpty Dom Center just popping off for the next couple of hours. Um, okay. Okay. Well, let's have a look at the one in the office. I'm guessing it'll be relative garbage and that's fine i just want to have a look at it you know although i wonder if by picking it up i'm locking myself into using that particular one instead of the really nice expensive one since i did informally put myself on a mission to outplay kim's transceiver and it seems that the way to do that is that one there you just have to be freaking loaded for that hey look a poster odd that you didn't catch this graffito earlier van ake overdrive it says okay cool I've noticed that because I thought about it, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if much is going to... Oh, you know what? Technically, that would interact with the one thought I used to have that would give me one experience per 
thought sphere or whatever, wouldn't it? Yeah, probably it would. Okay. Ah, uh, this here. A common office radio, like any of those found in countless waiting rooms, lounges, and other semi-public spaces all over the world. Gotcha. This does seem like the kind of thing where if I do interact with it and, uh... Hmm. Hmm. I'm worried that if I... If I... If I ask Kim how to get the transceiver out of it, that I'm not going to be able to then not take the transceiver out of it. <laughs> of course, I also don't know if I'm going to be able to generate 120 real, you know? Well, let me have a look here. What, what could I technically pawn to make up the difference? Can I pawn my books? Probably not. I think I just pawn items, right? The rifle's a good start. Hmm... But I don't have much else of actual value, do I? I'm not gonna sell Kim's pen. Oh! The production schedule filament. I could absolutely sell the production schedule filament. I've already looked at it, I've already talked to Sona about it. There's really no reason not to pawn it. Sona doesn't want it, and she's the only person who would lay any claim on it aside from the people who aren't actually in this game. She just talks about them. That's the thing to do, isn't it? Keep the rifle around. Keep the rifle around just in case it becomes relevant again. Since it was technically suddenly relevant again when I, um, talked to Titus about the possibility of Ruby having, you know, done the murder. But, uh, but sell the filament schedule. Yeah, that's the thing to do. All right, all right. Give me a second get back to the pawn shop. All right then, Roy. Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. I have something to sell. Sure. Let me have a look. Ah, uh, let's see here. I'll check my pockets. Anything else you're thinking of selling? The production schedule filament memory. That's the one. Is there any reason to save this? No. Just pawn it. It's great. Get out of it. Get it out of here. Yeah! Okay. Good. Now close. Now I under have $150. And now I can afford it. I don't have anything Another else to time, perhaps. I am back for the transceiver. Is it still available? For the moment, yes. Man, that's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> but what am I using my money for these days? Absolutely nothing. I don't stay at the Whirling. I have bought all the books that exist. Buy the highly expensive transceiver. You won't regret it, officer. Whatever you need, the Model 9 can handle. Mm, continue. The lieutenant watches you take the transceiver with barely disguised envy. <laughs> you jealous, Kim? Can't wait to take this baby for a spin. Do you think we'll actually be able to reach the coalition with this? Thanks, Roy. This is just what I needed. Mm, do we actually call him out on it? I think yes. Not at all, detective. A crystal sprack is a fine piece of equipment, but I'm quite satisfied with my Dino Wave. Hey man, if it survives this next thing we're gonna do with it, I wouldn't mind just tossing it over to you, but, you know, I, I still technically owe you for paying my debt on the first day that, you know, we met. So, you know, if that's an option, I'll do it. Continue. Oh, he's totally jealous. He can barely hold it in. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you think we'll actually be able to reach the Coalition with this? You've surprised me more than once during the course of our investigation. But I have to say, it still seems like a remote scenario. He shrugs. The pawnbroker turns from you to the lieutenant and back again. A distant look on his face. I feel like that's normal. Thanks, Roy. This is just what I needed. We're glad to hear it. He smiles as the reflected lights, light dances across his lenses. Great. Good. Okay. Wonderful. I got the transceiver. Do we just take care of that now? Is that the next thing to do? Or do I go talk to the people in the Doom business area? How long have we been going? Hmm. It's My timer's coming up on an hour, but also there's going to be a bunch of stuff that has to get cut out, what with, you know, redoing things and... Is it gonna be that much? I don't know. Why don't we talk to the people in the Doom business area and next time we'll bring that, r r that transceiver back. And go ahead and try and take on yeah, the responsibility. Okay, first up, the less likely, less likely to appreciate it person. Hello. Hello again, esteemed officer. 
and welcome to crime, romance, Wait. and biographies of famous people. Wait, that reminds me. Okay, 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 okay. Farewell for now, peddler. I did not notice at first, but when I came to try and check in on Annette over here... Hi, Ace Detective. Are you here for more books? This. Little girl, help! My Dick Mullen book ripped before I could get to the end. Do you know what happens? The question is... Now, I also have the option to ask her mother, but I'm guessing Plaisance isn't going to be any use at all on this particular matter, so maybe I should talk to Plaisance first? I just only just now remembered about it, you see. Also interesting that her textbook vanishes when she's speaking to me and then regenerates on her lap when I stop talking to her. Plaisance, hello. Hello again, esteemed officer. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I didn't look at this thing. Highly expensive transceiver. A Crystal Sprach Model 9 portable transceiver. Looks and sounds expensive. This model includes Crystal Sprach's patented signal purifier technology and a Bakelite briefcase shell. Good, good, good. Now then, uh, Jamrock Biker Cop Sunnies. Get that on here. Hello, child. I mean, not child. Hello, Plaisance. I was thinking maybe some empathy would go a Hello little ways again, in this particular. Officer, and welcome to crime romance, and biographies of famous people. She's got such a sh sharp, piercing voice that talking over seems futile. Uh, okay. So first, let's ask her about the Dick Mullen book. This, uh, this Dick Mullen book fell apart before I got to the end. Do you have another copy? Sure, the item. Oh, I'm very sorry, sir. Some of these old paperbacks just don't have the durability. I would be happy to sell you another one. But unfortunately, it's the last copy we had in stock. Of course it is. It would be too easy if I had another way to find out the ending, aside from just having, what was it? Like 20 plus reaction time or something? Reaction speed? Uh, Plaisance, I have something to tell you. I've found the actual source of doom. You might not be receptive to my information, but we're going to try it anyway. What do you mean the actual source? Earlier, you told me there was no curse. She clutches her pendant, clearly irritated. My investigation had l has led me to discover a two millimeter entroponetic hole in reality. That's the source of doom, both in the commercial area and in Martinez. I'm afraid all I can tell you is this. You must leave Martinez immediately. It's too dangerous to stay. I'm going to at least try and give her the information. She's not going to be able to do anything useful with it, but... This is also just like doom mongering, which is basically what I'm doing anyway, but let's try at least give some actual... Does it count as actual facts? I mean, it seems to be an actual fact, I just don't really understand it yet, yet here I am <laughs> doom mongering. Let's do it! Uh, a what? A tiny hole in reality. It may be connected with Pale, an origin point of sorts. It would explain why historically so many things have ended in failure here in Martinez. She's just not going to believe me, isn't she? Huh. Ma'am, what he's saying is true. We found an anthroponetic anomaly in the small pine wood church down the coast. I don't mean to be an alarmist. Apparently I do. More research is needed, but it's not looking good. Is she going to take it more seriously now that he's spoken up? I wonder. Continue. But, but that's not in any of the ancient texts. How am I supposed to protect my bookstore from that? I think you're not supposed to protect your bookstore from that. Plaisance, continue. Tell her the truth. It's out of her hands. Huh. Challenging rhetoric success. Tell her the truth. You can't protect it. Not against Pale. Close up the shop and try to get as far away from this thing as possible. You can protect it with hope by refusing to give up. That's what people have done in the past, by building a church, a place of worship around this thing. You'll have to find your own answer. I've spent too long on this quest as it is. <laughs> I mean, you can't protect against Pale at the moment, can you? Telling her to pretend, protect it with hope is nice and all, but it's also pointless. <sighs> I don't have a middle ground. I can't say we should wait until more research has been done and you have better information. We have no way of uh, we have no way of ensuring that she'd even get that information once it was available. Rhetoric wants me to tell her to just leave. And really, that is the only way to be safe from it if it's going to do what it seems like it's going to do, right? And maybe Kim will temper my predict my alarmist business. He's trying not to be alarmist, after all. Close the shop. But it's all I have. No, there must be a way. Hmm, continue. Especially now that Annette is settling in at school again. 
She's finally making friends in this place. No, we can't leave Martinez. We can't. She looks at her daughter, quietly studying in the corner of the shop. Mm, that does make things difficult. Continue. Thank you for your help in any case. You're welcome back here any time. Okay. All right. Well, I told her. That's all I can really do. <sighs> Annette! Annette, hello. Hi, Ace Detective. Are you here for more books? Little girl, help. My Dick Mullen book ripped before I could get to the end. Do you know what happens? Which book was it, sir? Uh, Dick Mullen and the Mistaken Identity. Oh, I'm very sorry, sir. I haven't read that one yet. I wish I could help you. Ah, okay. Again. Again. This is not surprising. There's really no reason to expect that there would be a way around that particular reaction speed check. What's this? Give up. You'll never find the answer. There's no other copy of Dick Mullen and the Mistaken Identity here. That does appear to be the case, Logic. But, but why? There's got to be a way to solve this. I guess that's it. Maybe it's better this way. Let's start here. Because that's how the world works. Some stories never get finished. You shouldn't expect there to be a tidy, satisfying ending. But I want to! This is, this is the door quest all over again, isn't it? Continue. But, but, what if you never find out how your story ends? A fair question, Inland Empire. There's got to be a way to solve this? I don't think there is, but let's go ahead and pursue it. There isn't. If only you had more time, more resources. Who knows what you could have come up with. Hmm, continue. Maybe if there had been more money and less speed. I... If I had had speed in my system, my reaction speed would have been better and maybe I would know the end of this book by now. Continue. Or more speed. I thought you might say that. Or that, yes. Either way, you might have been able to come up with an answer. But not like this. It's just too late. Hang on, you can do this. Use your imagination. Oh. You know who the suspects are. Just make it up. Sure, conceptualization, we can do that. So, who killed Charles Belay and Deanna Denuva, detective? Just fucking pick one. <laughs> conceptualization is apparently done with this. Wait, I've got it. It was communism. It was love did them in. The dirty police captain, the junkie art collector, the politician's twat son. Fuck you, book, it was Dick Mullen. <laughs> I mean, I got to, right? I've got to. It still doesn't make sense. But who cares? Yes, Dick Mullen, the famous detective, killed his best friend and the dame he just nailed in cold blood. But why'd he do it? Unclear. The world will never know. Continue. Then things are just mysteri mysterious. Doesn't matter. The choice has been made. You caught the criminal. It was Dick Mullen all along. Who's the real detective now? That's right. It's you. Rest easy tonight, real detective. <laughs> this is the best outcome. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. That would be a great place to leave off the episode, but I'm going to go talk to um I'm going to go talk to the dice maker first. Oh, it's dark in here. It's fine. I know my way. I know my way. I don't need no light. See you up there. Man, it's dark, though. <laughs> Maybe I do need a flashlight. Wait. Wait. I'm actually not allowed to walk into the darkness, am I? It actually won't allow it. Okay, okay. Fine. I didn't know that. Well, now I know. Interesting. Look at that. away because I don't want to shine it directly into her eyes hello oh it's you again are you looking for a die I wonder how she's going to react to this but I guess the best way to answer that question is tell her about it I think I found the actual source of the curse you mean the curse that I'm spared of because I live outside its immediate reach yes well about that it's a bit more complicated than I first thought it would be uh, that one. I'm listening. 
She leans back in her chair, arms crossed across her chest. Just say it. There's a two millimeter hole in reality located in a church on the other side of the canal. I think it may be related to pale. Now that I think about it, it sounds too preposterous to say out loud. I just said it out loud to Plaisance. I'll say it out loud to you too. Excuse me? A two millimeter hole in reality? This can't be true. She sits up, visibly agitated. Continue. Kim, got my back on this one? I'm afraid it is, ma'am. Sona Lukanen killed her. The former lead programmer of Fortress Accident made the discovery. Yep, continue. Sona is involved in this? She appears to take this in while the chatter from her headphones continues unabated. Continue. So it's even worse than I thought. It's not just the commercial area that's cursed. It's the entire world. Effectively, continue. She looks outside the window where daylight has filled the yard. What? No, I wouldn't go so far as to say that the entire world is doomed. It's what I have preached the whole time and no one listened. Don't worry about it. You've been doing fine so far. I'm sure it's nothing. Say nothing. Oh, man. Okay. Well, here's the thing. If there is one and possibly seven swallows in just Revachal, or Martinez, excuse me, Martinez. Then odds are that they're everywhere. And it is the advent of the pale, yeah? I mean, we don't we don't know that yet. I don't know if I'm quite ready to do the apocalypse cop option here. <sighs> Maybe I should just let her cook. See what she has to say on it without my influence. Uh, I guess the least I can do is check up on Sona, see how she's doing. Hmm. Continue. In any case, thank you for stopping by. It's good to have an answer, even if I can't claim to understand it fully. Probably that was the least interesting option, I guess. But it felt appropriate, I don't know. Great. Good. Wonderful. Do we want to do the last task that I picked up last time? The, the pointless one? <laughs> Just as a final kicker, you know? A chaser, you might say? Sure. Give me a second to get Dev Rart and waste my dang time. Hmm? What's this? Poor animals. No rest for their bodies after death. Empathy! My empathy's high enough now that I feel bad for the taxidermied animals. I see. gone through the back to get back to the dice maker's place. I can never remember her name. It comes up so infrequently that I can't retain it. Anyway, Everett's place. Give me a second. A common office radio, like any of those found in countless waiting rooms, lounges, and other semi-public spaces all over the world. I can still look at this. Huh. Kim, how do I get the transceiver out of this thing? There's usually a little switch somewhere. Ah, yes. It's the one that says release. The lieutenant points to the side of the radio. Flip the release switch. The lock disengages with a nice click. You may now safely remove the transceiver unit. I have gained it. Examine the transceiver. There's nothing obviously remarkable about it. It's about the size of a common pasta box with knobs of molded plastic. What else is there to say? What indeed? Continue. If this transceiver were a person, it would be an accountant at a large logistics firm. Perfectly competent, but unexceptional. I guess that's a fair way to look at it. I prefer a transceiver with a little more flash and style. There's something ominous about this radio transceiver. It's an ill omen. I guess pure functionality is itself a kind of aesthetics. Tap it with your knuckles. Yeah, this'll do. Uh, I guess it's a type of aesthetics? I suppose it does have a certain no-nonsense appeal, if you prefer that sort of thing. If I preferred that sort of thing, I wouldn't have spent 120 real about on the deluxe model, but do continue. The transceiver appears quite at peace with its appearance. I would imagine so. Leave. With its transceiver gone, the radio has ceased its persistent buzzing. It is as silent as a headstone. 
Nice, I guess. Great, so now I have a transceiver. A perfectly adequate transceiver, which I could probably pawn, come down to it. A common radio transceiver, produced by a generic manufacturer. There must be tens of thousands like it all over the world, each one ind indistinguishable from every other. Great, I've got it. If I can remember where the other transceiver p location suggestion was, perhaps I'll check on that too. But for now, Everard! Hey, what's this? A rust in control panel. Oh, right, 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 right. That was how I lowered the, the box that has the rich man in it. Oh, the rich man. Am I going to do that red check at some point? Well, certainly not right now. All right. Let's waste some time. Get deflected off of Everard's impenetrable shields. Hello. Mr. Dubois, the word in Martinez is a certain police officer is once again happily reunited with his service weapon. Congratulations, my friend. He winks at you. Yeah, I suppose you would have heard about that. Continue. I prefer my police officers old-fashioned like that, with a gun. You can do so many things with a gun that you can't do without one. <laughs> now, what can I help you with? What indeed? Oh, the the borscht. I did it, Everard. I turned it off. The borscht. That's what this is, isn't it? Let's start there. What? The big man looks at you confused. The shady brew. You told me to make it even shadier. I didn't. It had alcohol in it. Now there's no alcohol. Did I? Well done then, Harry. I like not knowing about it, and I'm sure you made the right call. I spend the whole day delegating tasks, and it's a great relief to see people taking initiative. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I think Harry was maybe thinking this was going to be a gotcha moment, but of course it's not. It's Everard. I don't even want to know what all of that means. Brew, shady, alcohol, turned off. I'm going to let the world surprise me. You do that. Okay, so we got, look, my gun. Show it to him. Sure. My, my. She's quite the looker, Harry. You can't imagine how pleased I am the two of you are reunited. He lets out an appreciative whistle. Great, continue. Tell me, was it difficult to convince the pigs to give it up? The big man pauses to tap on his chin. Not at all, or the important thing is I got my gun back. I mean, it was complicated in a fashion. I don't know if difficult's the right word. Once she wasn't trying to shoot me with it, there wasn't actually any danger, apparently. Uh, important thing is I got it back. I guess you're right, Harry. <laughs> I appreciate you coming back to report on your progress. Now, what can Everard Claire do for you? So, I met a girl named Asel, who said she's working with you. You probably don't know anything about her, but we'll see if you do. Funny. Hmm. That doesn't ring any bells, Harry. The big man lets out a lazy yawn. Continue. Funny. She was trying to set up a narcotics operation in the old church on the coast. The lieutenant says, looking up from his notebook. He's actually trying to get my back on this, despite suggesting that we not do it. Well, thanks, Kim. Oh, that Asel. Yes. I do seem to remember sending a pretty young thing down there to liven up the place. Get some anodic music in there. He taps his temple. Did you also tell her to start the amphetamine lab? Anodic music? Liven up the place? Yes, that checks out. Let's change the subject. In which case, why did I bring it up? D did you? <laughs> did you tell her? Amphetamine lab? That sounds very immoral and debauched. Frankly, a health risk. He seems taken aback. Of course he does. That's how he always is about this sort of thing. Continue. But what do I know about kids these days? The music they listen to, the drugs they do while they listen to that music. He shakes his head with a melancholy smile. It sounds to me like you are trying to start an amphetamine lab in the district. And you're using some delinquents you found God knows where to set it up and run it for you. The lieutenant says with an uncharacteristic note of contempt in his voice. He's really going all in on this. Continue. Found God knows where. That Asel is the daughter of Miko the Kebab. A man who once killed a guy with a kebab. Oh, right. He does... Her father has organized crime... Crime, uh, connections. I remember hearing about that. The big man exhales loudly. Right, continue. I think a daughter of a man who killed a man with a kebab can handle running a little nightclub. Don't you? She doesn't seem to be running it, but fair. Miko the Kebab? Really? Maybe it was Bogovic. Or Jakob. I think it might have been Conrad. He stares off into the distance, seemingly trying to remember something. Okay. Anyway, I shut down the amphetamine production, but let them go on with the nightclub plan. Say nothing. 
I mean, I've been reporting back to him about absolutely everything else that I did to ostensibly thwart him, and he seems pretty unfussed about any of it. Plus, you know, he wanted to run drugs out of his own uh, shipping thing here, and I shut him down on that too, so sure, let's just tell him we don't like drugs some more. A nightclub. Harry, I'm an old-fashioned guy. After work, I like to listen to some rock and roll music and have a non-alcoholic lager. Nightclubs don't interest me. He taps on his chin. He seems to be tapping a lot of his face today. Continue. But here I am, talking about myself, when you have much more important things going on. Tell me, Harry, how can I help you? His expression becomes serious. Uh, do I have a few more questions about the harbor? I think it's just glowing because I haven't clicked it before, right? Let's have a look. I'm always happy to educate... That's it for now. Very nice, Harry. Yes. Is there... No, there isn't. Great. Wonderful. <laughs> Tiny little subquests complete. Look at that. Look at my task list. It's so clean. And funny that this one's highlighted, because that's what we're doing next time. And we are leaving off right here. Again, I hope you're not too disappointed that I did decide to reload. I personally am very happy I did. I cannot fathom making that scene optional and having the alternate alternative be what it is. Particularly given that there's no growth, there's no payoff, there's nothing. It's just a failure. It's just a kick in the teeth so far as your relationship with Kim is concerned that is then no longer addressed afterwards. That... <sighs> it doesn't sit well with me, but whatever, whatever. The decision is made. I reloaded. Now it didn't happen? <laughs> I wish there was a way to address it, but apparently there's not a way to address the internalized concepts that led Harry to blurt out that particular thing in this alternate universe scenario. Either way, my decision was made, and I hope we're all okay with that. I'm very okay with it, by the way. <laughs> I've got my motivation back, and I feel very good about that. Anyway, thank you for watching. Next time, I guess I'm going to try and take on the responsibility. Should be a great time. I'll see you then.